Quit being a bitch, In 1989, uh, Stone Street Magazine published a book that I did with someone who used to work at Pine Street Inn. It's about the homeless, so the proper sarcasm, we called it Rent Free. And um, Phil Thomas, my co author, my collaborator, is something of a recluse. He does not come to the party and read me this stuff. I'm sorry, I'm going to read some of the stuff. Two poems, both about tragedies that will befall the homeless, and one of them is death. Salvici. Long before Salvici lay there and cast it, static memory, discarded and abused tragedy, where the truth dropped from the sky as coke bleary children who coughed bad excuses for missing the wake and reopened the pedal coffin for one final peek. The sound was a street corner slog, creating an, creating an accordion jowl neck from his hand puddles cologne crowd, in which and where swivel to where the action was. Two-tone jeans, medallion, antecedent, airport fuel and fog, kingdom shadow, answer effect, cigarette exhalations perfected in models dim dens of crucifix. St. Anthony in red velvet. Sounds love it and love it before it's declined. To a visit red nutshell romance, cruising the neighborhood for curious hearts to sway away the night with, in woozy dreaming and woozy abandon. Stunard, stunard, the castle had been duped by some fickle affectation, tethered sweet intoxication, sneaking tippy toe rather than waiting for the big looting of gladness in a misty gulp as heart. I walk in my sleep to the bashi ball of time, to the lonesomest, hidden most cement table chessboard I can find, somewhere where our fathers used to croon and cry and split up bottles bottom, then lay down and wonder why. I look for you there. I listen for your stare, that rubber face glow, glare with its tongue-in-cheek poke, an impossibly ugly printed t-shirt job, bouncing beer belly prop with a sleeve full of smokes. I look for you, Sam. But the world's ending me on. Get on with it. So I really can't stay.
there's some people who actually get their own apartment and can't handle it. Very sad, especially when they've been waiting for years and years. Larry Smythe. I remember how Larry Smythe breathed his first sigh of relief the day his room came through. The day his renter's application slipped through the claws of his landlord's paranoia. And his fist bald, held high to sweaty keys of the future. I recall even thinking somehow that Larry had finally found a sort of hometown get, get, get some main tower, perched over or at least away from the grand melee of survival, where he could shiver in dreamy remembrance of lacking returns to the foamy banks of holy desolation's doorstep. And a pink faced boy wondered, has to wait demons of breadline and welfare snafu? Demons of headlong approach and cruelty luring with an echo his burden of love into some slushy entanglement of further loss. Demons of a father's caress around the neck of exuberant childhood, leaving questions limp and bloody in the playground crucifixion. Demons of smoking his fortune and non belonging, joining the giant scoffing ring about the spark of intention. Demons atop demons, demons of scheming demons that are swarm over Larry's glass house tranquility, buzzing the resolve to enter, but fading in the glow of Larry's radiant arc of peace. No, I never really expected to be sitting up now at night, wondering whatever went wrong. What brings Larry back to the shores of public misery, in calculation of new catastrophe, with a weak bit placed on another chance of change? It was a dreamer's fire lightning, all his todays and gasped for some solemn tomorrow. <laughs>